heard some time ago that I was working in faith and I had to keep applying it to my mind and to my thought life till I reached the now zone. The now zone means at this moment. So we take the word of God, we hear it, we believe it to the point that, hey, this is too good to be true, but I know God loved me so much so I can accept it. So now your mind arrived to a now zone. And once your mind arrived to a now zone, you don't need to do nothing mm. else. Come mm. on. Now it's unto him. That's it. That's it. That's able to do exceedingly abundantly yeah. above all that we can ask of what thing yeah. according to the power of the word to them. See, watch it. Without reaching the now zone, now it's, now it's under you. <laughs> they can't, it's not able to do it. Not able to pay the mortgage. <laughs> not able to put the kids through college. Not able to pay the car note. Not able. But you got to get your mind to a place. Now, okay, God, now you take over. That's what this pathway, this mental pathway is for. And you'll be amazed how swiftly the knowledge, the wisdom, and the association come to your life. The Bible says this. Don't be intimidated by the afflictions that you, that you, you encounter because a brother is born for your day of adversity. God saw us before the beginning of time Say, on this day, they're going to go through something. So I'm going to make sure that this person right here is born on that day so they live in the same generation. And I'm going to make sure those pass me. But watch this, those pass me. When your mind, watch this now, is now being cultivating to the truth of how much God loves you. Now you draw those people in your life. Amen. So you can stand right, right beside Bill Gates and feel like you've been knowing them all your life. <laughs> Yeah, right. Amen. Because I mean, just like what, what, what Brother Delco. I mean, this is the first time that I had, you know, physically met him this this day. But I feel like we've been knowing each other for for a while. So now this stranger is now my friend. See, a lot of times we keep trying to hit friends, and God said, "I got strangers that will treat you better than your previous friends." Why? Because the level of understanding that they have, they would use that to assist you in any and every area of your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the friends that you have now, they just want you to be like the, the guy at the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> you know, it was back then. They wait for the water, the trouble, and everything. The reason why he didn't go no further, put them more effort, because everybody around them was lame. He said, well, everybody says, you ain't doing no better than I am. And, and look, like, you know, as long as, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little closer to the pool than you are, you know, I'm all right. You know, so it brings that, that true association in your life. So don't be afraid to let go of previous relationships. If you're trying to get to heaven's experience, you must understand this. You're a rocket ship. So that means that when I take off, when I launch off, everybody's with me. But once I hit a certain dimension, somebody's going to fall off. Ooh. Then I hit another dimension, somebody else is going to fall. They trying to hold on as tight as they can, but they're just not qualified for that level. Okay. So don't try to, don't try to put a, a, a cable rope and say, come on, come on. Let them go. And then as they see you make it to the top, then they say, you know what? I'm, up. I'm going next. Launch me off next. <laughs> Launch me off. Let me go. <laughs> Launch me off. Because sometimes we get in the relationship because we're trying to hold on to the relationship. But God needs you to get in a better relationship Amen. in order to help the previous relationship. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. But that's my BFF. We played in the sandbox together. <laughs> ah, don't work like that. Okay, let's look at verse um, 15 or 14. He said, For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly if they have been what? Mindful. Say it again, they have been what? Mindful. So he says this, and certainly if they have been mindful of that country from which they came out, they may have opportunity to what? To return. Mm -hmm. So that mind is that pathway to what? Watch this now. It will open doors. Mm -hmm. It will give you the opportunities that you don't want or give you the opportunities that you do want. Okay. So he said if they've been mindful from which they came, they will have opportunity to return because that door opened up for them. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at this. Okay, let me get my mind on this thing. Mm -hmm. If I get my mind on the right thing and set my mind on that thing, my on it, it will begin to hatch because the hen sits on an egg, she sets herself on the egg, and she sets there until that egg hatch. And so thoughts are just like eggs. So you got to keep thinking on that thought, 
rest on it, keep your mind on it until it hatch and that door, that opportunity opens for you. Don't give up or faint when trouble comes your way because trouble is just only an indicator that you're closer than what you think. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, look at this now. The thing I love about this that we see that God, we understand that God wants us to have a prosperous life. Say, God wants me to have a prosperous life. God wants me to have a prosperous life. So we have to continue to always think big. Uh, my wife was saying that she wanted this, this other house and, and we was going to do some rushing, so we saw a model house. And she ran up there looking. You know how your ladies do. You don't care. No, you know there ain't nobody in there. <laughs> but you go walk on, just in case somebody might be, you know, work on the door and they ring the doorbell. Nobody's in the house. She's looking at it. When I looked at the house, I looked at it different than I normally would look at a house. I look, I said, I can write a check for that. Mm -hmm. But he was like, okay, got to put this much money down. You got to have, you know, this much, you no know, six months of reserves and this and that, that, that. See, the love of God, we surpass that knowledge. Amen. To the point that let's just write a check for it. or either put take the money for the price of the house, put it in the bank, and borrow get your own money. <laughs> okay, that's another thing. <laughs> you know, you can lean on your own finances. Amen. Okay, you can lean on your okay, let's listen. Y'all, 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 y'all understand. Y'all know I take care of that. Okay. All right, where are we? Let's let's find where we are. Let's go over here to the book of Mark, chapter seven. This one thing I learned about thinking. The thing I learned about thinking is that thinking well, either it will activate, or it will restorate, or it will deteriorate. Okay. Mm. Okay? So you always have to have your thinking going in the right direction. Because it can activate things for you. Now, this is not Christian science. This is because Jesus said, even says, let this mind be in you. Paul said, which also in Christ Jesus. Think like him. And we know we're supposed to be kings. Yes. And Paul said this. No, was John said this in Revelation. He said, and see that no man takes your crown. Right. Don't let no man change the way you're supposed to think. Ooh. And king's supposed to have what? Gold. Mm -mm. Currency. God's currency. Amen. Amen. King's supposed to have gold. Amen. And he said that don't let no man take your crown. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are children of the most high God. Amen. He said, um, I think it was Isaiah, he says that I have seen the children of God walk like footmen while the enemies of God ride in the horses and the chariots. Right. Right. He says something's wrong with that picture. Mm -hmm. And then you want to come and minister and want me to come to your church and read your Bible? No, this person already, already has my attention. Even though they're not saying anything that's beneficial to me, but based on the wealth that they have, it adds volume to my ears. They can hear it louder. Okay, let, let's go. Okay. But without without well, people can't really hear you. And there's two, thank you, Holy Ghost, there's two prophecies that haven't came to pass yet. All of them came to pass except these two. That is the wealth of Solomon, which is that paper. The second one is the gospel, the true gospel being preached all around the world, which the wealth will help mobilize that gospel to get there. So we are living right in the best Ever. I can tell right now, I believe all of you guys are givers. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, that's good. If you're not, you'll be before this meeting is over. Amen. Okay, so the book of Mark, chapter 7. The book of Mark, chapter 7. Are we being blessed today? Yes. yes. Okay. The book of Mark, chapter 7. And we're going to look here at. Uh, just to deal with the Seraphina woman. And verse 26, she was a Greek, Seraphina, by nation. And she besought Jesus that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said to her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meat or suitable to take the children's what? Bread. Bread and to cast it unto dogs. And she said, and she answered and said to him, yea, Lord, yet the dogs were? Under the, table. Under the table, what they do? Eat the children's crumbs. They eat the who crumbs? Children's okay, we're gonna look at that word children. He said the dog's supposed to eat the children's crumbs. Mm. But the bread belongs to the children. Mm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at Luke chapter 16. Verse 
verse 19, And there was a certain rich man which had was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid, it, laid at his gate full of sores. And watch this. He was what? Desiring. desiring. He was desiring to be fed with the what? Crumbs. With the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Now, the rich man was not a child of God. Lazarus was a child of God. He was in wrong position. Right. Mm -hmm. He had a crumb mentality. He didn't realize who he was. He didn't think on the level of his creation. Watch this now, because the crumbs was not even, was not even fit for the level of the creation where he was created for. It was not even on his level. It, was, it, was out of his, it wasn't for him. He was living beneath himself. But how did he get there? Through his own desires. Amen. So we got to find out, okay, well, what, what about desires? Look at, look at it. You, you got to be careful because the world can train your desires. Mm -hmm. They can train your desires. They can train you to go in debt. They can train you to spend all your money. They can train you to show off. They can train you to do all these things. They can train you to say, I, I just want just enough for me and my family. I, I, just, just a little bit, just enough for me to get by. They can train your desires, and his desires position him under the table. Mm -hmm. And the crumbs were not meant for Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Those crumbs was meant for the rich man. Mm -hmm. But the day the tables turn, or the tables flip, amen, amen. put it where you want it. But the day you and I will be sitting at the table now. Amen. Even uh, okay. Melchizedek. Melchizedek, he ran away from the covenant blessing because he said, I'm just like a dog. But when he came to the table, to the king's table, to David's table, he said the table was so lavish that the drapes on the table what, covered his disabilities. That when you get to the table, nobody can see the disabilities that you have. Wow. And that's, that's beautiful. But so we got to stop calling ourselves something that we're not. We got to stop receiving something that we were not created to receive. Now, the book of um, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, we're just about ready to close it out. The book of Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, the Lord showed me this the other day. I said, my God, my God. Plenty of times we have confessed and read the scripture in Ephesians 2 and verse 10. He said, for we are his workmanship or his handyman, recreated in Christ Jesus unto what? Good, Good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Anybody remember the Amplified Version? Taking what? Taking paths that leads to the good life. Right. Amen? And the Lord showed me this. He said, there's a path that leads to the good life. He said, but it only opened up to the nature that it was intended to open up to. He said, if you don't, if you don't keep this in your conscience, that you were recreated anew, born through Christ Jesus, he said that path will always be closed to you. Because that path only opens to God's workmanship. That path only opens to God's handiwork. That path only works open to those who's recreated again in Christ Jesus. Those are, once we understand, this is who I am. This is who God has created me to be. Okay, I might have some things going on around me, but what's around me does not um, uh, and I say, well, uh, give the appraisal for how much I'm worth through Christ Jesus. What's going on around me does not give the definition of who I am. Are you, are you, are you following right, right, right. So watch this now. So he said, once you realize that you was born anew and you're my child, that path will open to you and you'll walk down that path. But anytime you start acting like and think like the person who I saved you from, that path will close up and you can't walk down to it. That's why a lot of us today are having the phenomenal success that we're having, because we're realizing something God intended for you and I to have. And we have to keep our mindset in that position so that path will always stay open wide for us. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And those doors open for us, that path open for us, it's easy to walk that journey where you know this is where you belong. Amen. 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 This is where you belong. I love this. And once we, we really grasp this, you can build anything. The book of Genesis chapter 11, verse familiar passage again. The Bible said whatever they imagine to do, what they begin to build, amen. Can I interest you in a simple wealth building plan? Mm -hmm. It's simple to do. It. Hey, I was talking to um, Brother Delco. <laughs> I, said, I said, 
this carrot bars is not easy, yeah. man. Yeah. That's just yeah. not easy. I said, it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> but what I've imagined to do, I can build it. Nothing can restrain me. Yeah. Nothing can stop me. Because this is what God wants us to have. This is our ministry. Amen. Not just a business. It's, the key, it's God's business, but it's our ministry. We are the one who will minister out this to the lives of other people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we see that that you know keep your mind on the right track. When I, every time I watch in uh, Facebook, when I see them hold up a book or something, I get right on Amazon my phone. Boom, I order it. Mm -hmm. I order my library. I, I own thousands of thousands of dollars worth of stuff. I just keep reading, keep confessing. I just keep thinking, having a time to sit there and process Ooh. thoughts. And this thought will go get another thought, and that thought will get a bigger thought. That thought get a bigger. It's just like worry in reverse. Yeah. It's like you know somebody owe you a quarter, you find out you find you now you think about somebody who owe you ten dollars. <laughs> Amen. So this way that thought is gonna get bigger thoughts. You just think into the point. I said, Lord, I said, I gotta go, because I'm about to pass out right here. <laughs> because I just can't take it anymore. Because God said, Listen, look, I just need your thinking. I just need you to believe. Amen. 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 So I'm, I'm not gonna go into deep in that because we'll be here another hour for that. I'm not gonna go no deeper than that. So that's why God said in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, he says now, consider the lilies of the field. How oh, they, yes. they don't toll, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He said, and look at Solomon. He said, he said these fields are more arrayed than Solomon. And he was, he was trying to, you know, trying to show us a picture of a person created in his image and something he just created. He said, if I could take care of this, he said, I can take care of that what I created in my image. Amen. But he said, listen now, all these things, he said, you know, God knows that we have need of. Well, notice something. He said, seek ye first, what? The kingdom, the kingdom of, God. of God and his what? Righteousness. And he said, well, all these things will be what? Added. added. Now, that word added doesn't only mean addition. It also means indisputable. That's right. Yes. So that means that none, nobody can say about you having it Amen. once you op operate in God's kingdom. That's right. And when you get into God's kingdom and you walk through his kingdom, his streets are paved with what? Gold. Streets are paved with gold. And this is something that he wants you and I to understand and to be a part of our lives. Amen. Now, so the book of Mark, chapter 4. We're about to land. Book of Mark, chapter 4. Okay, great. In verse 26. He says, so is the kingdom of God, as so a man should cast seed into the ground, what? And should, what? Sleep and rise, what? Night and day. So God is saying this, my kingdom, first thing I want you to do, just rest in it. Okay? He said, just rest. Just sleep. And he said, rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and you know it, not how, how you got to this place where you are right now. Amen. He said, for the earth bring forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. He said, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he put it in the sickle because the harvest has come. Mm -hmm. Now the sickle is a metal wooden instrument, but it's but in the Greek it's called a business tool. Oh, come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a business tool. Look out. Put it in means that the way you're going to put it in is I'm going to give you a business tool to, to use it to put it in with. Because see, all the messages, listen to me, this earth is pregnant with seeds of prosperity. This world, world has more wealth in it than it did before the beginning of time. It has replenished and has accumulated in great abundance. And God said, the harvest is here, and I'm giving you a sickle called caribars. A tool to put in the harvest. You better listen. I'm speaking to you as a prophet, Ooh, apostle. Yeah. You call it whatever you want it. But I feel this so strong on my life. And this is what, now watch now, all the other avenues or opportunities that I have been in, a lot of people just didn't qualify. Just didn't qualify. But for this, everybody qualifies. Yes. Yes. Everybody qualifies. This is God's goal. This is God's business. He said, I'm going to give you an instrument <laughs> to, to use to bring forth the wealth that's in this earth. To bring forth the prosperity, the harvest that's in this earth. Amen. Amen. Now, so he said, immediately he put it in the sickle. And 
the book of Exodus in chapter 3 said when they left Egypt, the, God told them to go have the women to knock on the doors of the Egyptian and borrow the gold, which means a place of the man on the gold, the silver, and the raiment. And notice something. He said, and take it and put it on your children mm -hmm. and head on to the promised land. Mm -hmm. See, this thing is so serious to the point God said, this is something that I want you to take and you put it on your family. He said, and put, no, he stripped Egypt of the gold, the silver, and the raiment. He said, and put it on your children. He said, because when you go, when you ride with God, God said, you won't, you're going to go in style. You won't be broke. People going to know that I'm your God. Yes. I'm the one who take care of you. So he's taking, uh, listen to me. I'm here just very clear. He's taking the gold from the hands of those who don't belong and put in the hands which it do belong. Yeah. So we have to be serious and tenacious about this gold thing that God has in front of us. In closing, in the book of Genesis, I think it's chapter 2 or 3. It's in the book of Genesis, amen. Yeah. And God, when he created the, um, the heavens and the earth and so on, and he begins to talk about the river Pison and the rivers, the Euphrates and so on and so on. And he said, and it's going to run through here and run to be self-sustainable. He said, and also it's going to go by the land of Havilah. That's my username. Uh, <laughs> yes, amen. Wow. Go amen. by the name of Havilah. He said, and there Woo. the gold is good. Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah, amen. He said, the gold is good. Amen. Then he says this. He told Adam, he said, I want you to dress it and keep it. My goodness. Dress it and keep it. When the enemy saw that, the enemy said, no, I got to do something about this. Right. Got to do something about this. So it's our responsibility to dress it and to keep it and to use it as a ministry tool in the lives of other people. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Amen. Father, we thank you so very much. And we, Lord, I decree your blessings upon your people. Lord God, we come against any distractions that come in their lives, the things with their children, their, their families, their automobiles, their possessions. Father God, we thank you right now that the grace of God is on their life will be on all things that they possess. And, and Father God, I thank you for you give us a good understanding, a quick understanding, and a great comprehension, Lord God, that we can understand these kingdom truths and discern rightfully what is yours and what you want us to have. And Lord God, I bless them now. Father God, I pray increase and a uh, and, uh, swift pace upon their, 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 their sickle that they're using, Father God, that they have a minister's mindset and people will be drawn to them. And Father God, it will be easy for them to understand, be easy for them to articulate. And Father God, I decree blessings, I decree overflow, I decree greater associations. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. amen. For those who just came in, I have these some gifts for you. Uh, this is a wristband I did. It's called In It to Win It. Yes. So once you're in care of you can't come out. All right? Just come out. You're in it. You got to win it. Amen. amen. And then I, I did these affirmations for you. And this is your wealth affirmation. Did everybody got the affirmation? Yeah. Now don't don't bend it up. Don't put it in your pocket book like that. <laughs> I just mess with you. But do these affirmations, you know, at least three to I'll say at least three times a day. Okay, that's at least. You can do it seven times a day if you want to. Right. But at least three and what it's not a magic portion, what do is keep your mind lined up. Amen. And I share it with my daughter, I have mine right on by the light switch. And I do my confession. I said, now look at these affirmations and tell me the ones that you've seen come to pass in, your, in our lives. I have about 12 of them. She only saw three that haven't came to pass yet. Amen. And a lot of these I put down on this piece of paper. It's one that I didn't put down. And I'm going to need you to ink pen this foot right quick and write it. And um, after we write it, um, we're going to make this aff affirmation. That's fine? Okay. Um, I, I need you to write this down. I'm so happy and grateful, which is the first part of it. You can put it on your affirmation. I'm so happy and grateful that by the grace of Jesus Christ, I can live a life that I don't deserve. By the grace, I'm so happy and grateful that by the grace of Jesus Christ, I can live a life that I don't deserve.
And you can rewrite or add to. I'm pretty sure you guys have affirmations and everything you can add to your library. But that's what God's told them in the book of Exodus. He said, put them on the doorpost. And then he said, and then when we get in there, <laughs> he said, into the land of wealth, he told them about those affirmations and everything. Amen? Amen. So, um, and we can, this, this brother here, if you could just lead us in the affirmations right quick. Just, just go through and let us all stand right quick and just do the affirmations. Mm -hmm. And you can just say it, and then we'll follow right behind you, okay? Read all of them? Yes. Yeah, I, I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful. That by the grace of Jesus Christ. That by the grace of Jesus Christ. I can live a life. I can live a life. I don't deserve. That I don't deserve. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful. That this is the year of God's great awe. This is the year of God's great awe. And power in my life now. And power in my life now. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful. That wherever I go. That wherever I go. Increase in favor will flow. Increase in favor will flow. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy. Happy and grateful that the Lord daily loads that, that the Lord, Lord daily loads me with benefits. Me with benefits. I'm so happy and grateful. I'm, I'm so, so happy, happy and grateful that I obey God. That, that I obey God. God. He is my only source. And he is my only source. source. And His perfect financial will. And His perfect financial will for my life. For my life shall be fulfilled. Shall be fulfilled. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful that I embrace abundance. That I embrace abundance. And abundance embraces me now. And abundance embraces me now. I am so happy and grateful. I am so, so happy, happy and grateful that I am outrageously successful. That I am outrageously successful in everything I do. In everything I do. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful that money flows. That money flows to me. To me. Easily and effortlessly. Easily and effortlessly. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful. Wealth is mine. Wealth is mine. To receive. To receive. Invest. Invest. Share. Share. Save. Save. To sow. To sow. And grow. And grow. Now. Now. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful that I am. That I am. The Abraham. The Abraham. To my family. To my family. And this generation. And this generation. I am so happy and grateful. I am so happy and grateful that the Lord. That the Lord is with me. Is with me. And I am. And I am a prosperous. A prosperous person.